Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I kind of want to make a video of um, a timeline that I had to study for the MCAT. Um, the scores that I was getting in the middle of the timeline, at what dates I was getting what score, what resources I used, and how I got to a 100 percentile score. Um, I'm kind of making this video because when I was studying, I asked for a lot of advice from upperclassmen. And I think a lot of people kind of had short-term memory about how long it took them to get uh, like the great scores that they got. Um, some, some people said like, you know, they studied only for a month or they studied for like a couple of hours part-time for like a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And I was just really frustrated because it was taking really long to get to the score that I wanted. And uh, it was only after the, I took the MCAT that, you know, they were kind of like, oh yeah, 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 by the way, I was actually studying for two summers and it was just like the last month that I took it seriously. And I was like, oh, so you didn't actually study for one month, you studied for a long time. And um, I think it was really helpful, one person who break, broke down exactly um, their timeline, the months that they t uh, were studying, um, and all those things. Because I see in a lot of MCAT study plans the, the resources that you use, but not necessarily the, the months and the timeline and the ups and downs and the peaks and valleys and things like that. So that's what I want to share with you. So um, this was uh, 2020 that I took the MCAT, so like two, three years now ago. Um, I'm a med stu student now at uh, Washington University. And uh, I was an undergrad at Washington University as well. And it was the middle of January or so in 2020 that I, I took this MCAT class that was offered by my school. It was a um, MCAT class that was taught by MD PhD students at the WashU Med Student at the WashU Med School. And it was a class that partnered with the Exam Crackers um, course. And uh, they kind of taught uh, two classes a week, two or three classes a week. And um, they would also give us the AAMC official. Um, official resources so that's kind of something you should know if you're just getting into studying is that the AMC is the has the official resources and that consists of question packs uh, section links and um, the official test when I was taking the exam I had five official tests I think you guys have six um, so um, those are kind of things that you should definitely try to buy uh, if you can I think they have a fee waiver too if you can't afford it um, but that's that's kind of something that is sort of something you should definitely buy uh, at the beginning of your studying so this is a course that I took uh, it kind of helped me be a little bit consistent but I mean as you'll see um, in March of 2020 I kind of stopped um, attending lectures because uh, COVID kind of messed everything up and so um, this was really kind of not so much to learn the material as it was to keep me consistent and um, make sure that I was actually keeping up with a curriculum that was set out for me. Okay, <clears throat> in January, so actually at the very beginning of this course, they had everybody take uh, um, the official exam, the AMC official exam, and um, it was seven and a half hours long and uh, it was kind of nerve wracking because I literally had no idea what the MCAT was like. Um, I didn't know that, you know, there's four different sections. I didn't know how much time you get for every section. I didn't know what concepts were being tested. And oh my gosh, I think um, a lot of people who are studying, they'll start out with like three months of um, of content review, two months of content review, whatever, a lot of content review. And then they'll look at the MCAT and they'll be like, why did I spend so much time doing content review? And I didn't really know the structure. And there's, there's a certain amount of sort of information that you get that you won't get unless you take an official exam or you just take any exam. So I'd say that a good heuristic for yourself is take the AMC sample exam or even if you want, if you don't want to waste like such a valuable resource, you can take, um, I know Kaplan has a free exam on their website. So take one exam before you start studying, before you start doing anything, just take an exam. And um, it's going to be like hell studying or sitting for seven and a half hours taking that exam not knowing so many things i remember not knowing the structure of a lot of amino acids i remember not knowing anything for the psychology sociology section and so you know you might get a pretty low score you might get a score that you're not really too excited by it so that's like totally fine uh, this this whole thing is just kind of to tell you what your score range is what your um what the structure is like what the timing is like what you need to improve and then after your exam, not the same day, obviously the next day, you kind of want to look through and see, well, which sections did I do well in? Which sections did I not do well in? I personally didn't do very well in the psychology sociology section because I didn't 
um, I didn't really study that material um, in my classes or anything. So I didn't know much about psychology or sociology. And so that was kind of the first thing that I targeted in my content review was, okay, I want to learn all these concepts before I take my second exam, you know? And so it'll help you kind of target your content review by just taking your first exam and knowing what the exam was like. The, the other thing I realized was that um, I thought that my school had prepared me pretty well. I had taken a lot of the biology chemistry classes at that point to be able to, you know, perform pretty decently on the MCAT. So like already on the first exam, I was doing pretty, pretty well, like 506, 507 range without studying. So that, that wasn't, um, that was kind of a good motivator for me that like, you know, I, I kind of have some of the basic science concepts down and now I kind of want to work on making sure I know all the content um, before I take my second exam. So that's the first thing I did. The Then January and February, I started learning concepts in my classes um, that I was taking through the MCAT course, as well as um, some textbooks. So I got the Berkeley Review, I got um, exam crackers through class, and then I was using this thing called Milestone's Review Sheets. Milestown is a Redditor, and um, he spent a lot of time here, she spent a lot of time compiling these review sheets. It's about 100, 120 pages or so. And um, it's this free PDF available online. I can also link it down below if you guys want. And, um, <coughs> sorry. And uh, it, it just like really, really compiles all the information really beautifully. And whereas, you know, the Berkeley Review and Exam Crackers are like thousands of pages long, Miles Down Review Sheets are 100 pages long, super, super condensed information. Um, and it's it's kind of helpful to be able to go through this and ask yourself, do I know this? Do I know this? Do I know this? And if you don't know something, then you can try to learn it from here. And if you can't learn it in such a condensed material, you can open up um, a, a textbook like Exam Crackers or the Big Leader View. Now, this is kind of not a promotion of these two textbooks. All, I think all the textbooks for the MCAT are really great. Uh, I thought the Berkeley Review is a really good textbook um, just because it went in a lot of depth for everything. It actually went in a little bit too much depth for things. So if you if you're kind of in a very, very condensed timeline, it might not be the best resource. But if you have a lot of time, this is definitely a good book to use. It also has tons of practice questions, which is always a good thing. Exam Cracker is, is kind of the more condensed version. So it might not have all the information you need for the MCAT, but it does have like a lot of information and it's pretty condensed and it's uh, it's illustrated. So it's, it's pretty nice to read through this. Um, okay, uh, so then March 2020 happened, COVID happened, lockdown happened. I had a lot more time to study now because, uh, you know, classes kind of went remote. It was a bit easier. And so I scheduled my exam for May and um, <clears throat> I kind of continued doing some of the content review that I was trying to do up here. Uh, specifically, I was really struggling with the bio, bio section at this point because I was realizing like, okay, I don't really know as much as I thought I did. Um, and so I kind of want to focus on that. Okay, so now I started doing practice questions at the end of March, beginning of April. I still didn't know, this is a very important point, I still didn't know all the content, right? I didn't know um, all the hormones from the endocrine system. I didn't know all the, um, you know, all the reproductive stuff. I didn't know embryology that well. I didn't know lungs. There were some physics things like mirrors and, and um mirrors and uh what is it lenses that i didn't really understand but i i was like okay i'm gonna start doing practice questions because i watched a couple of youtube videos from other people and that almost every single youtube video you'll see on youtube about the mcat will tell you that they wish that they did practice questions a little bit earlier um if you're spending like six months doing content review that's not what you want to do you want to kind of split your time your study time i think you should split your time 50 50 between content review and practice questions and uh, kind of the way that MCAT studying is designed is like, and I'll write this down, in your normal um, pre-med classes, um, you want to learn the information, patient, take an exam, pass that exam, right? Um, in MCAT studying, you kind of want to switch up the uh, pattern. You want to learn just enough info, information, to be able to take an exam, take the um, exam slash do practice questions, and then go through the practice questions and review um, the content. And so this is called a targeted learning approach. Okay, and so basically for your MCAT studying, you kind of want to do this targeted learning approach where you're 
you're just learning enough information to be able to do the practice questions. So it might take you a month, two months, three months to do the initial learning. But then you want to start doing practice questions and then um, you want to see like, okay, what concepts am I clearly not understanding? What concepts am I clearly understanding? And which ones are am I kind of like iffy between two, two options? And so now, now that you go through your practice questions, let's say you're doing 30 practice questions a day, right? And um, you get like 10 wrong, right? So you don't want to just review the 10 that you got wrong. You want to review all 30, make sure you understand every single thing. And then the ones that you're getting wrong or the ones that you're iffy between two points, you want to not only review that question, but you want to go back into, I went back into the milestone review sheets, but you can kind of go back into a textbook or you know Google or anything you want and kind of use a targeted learning approach to figure out well what what is all the information I can learn about this so that I never get a question wrong on this topic again and if you can do that then you're kind of doing um, a targeted learning approach where you're um, doing practice questions but you're also making sure that you learn from those practice questions and if you do enough practice questions and you keep doing this approach then eventually you'll have learned all the information and you'll feel really comfortable with the MCAT. Kind of the benefit of this approach is um is uh the benefit of this approach is that you will be able to do all the content review but also practice your test taking ability because most likely this is going to be at least for me this was the hardest exam that i had taken up until this point in my life and um probably still even uh, in my first year of med school, it's still MCAT is still one of the is the hardest exam that I've taken. It's a very difficult exam. It's so long. It is a lot of reading, and so you want to practice this test taking skill um, that you have to be able to read a passage and answer questions. And so that's kind of why you want to do this targeted learning approach over um, sort of your normal content review and then practice questions. So I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. Next thing I did was uh, I just did a lot of practice questions at this point. And again, I did that targeted learning approach. So I did practice questions from the following resources and I, I made videos or I will make videos on a lot of these on exactly how I use these and exactly how you can kind of use them to the maximum benefit. But I use UWorld, I use the official practice exams, I use the section banks. These are really tough questions. I use the question packs and honestly I didn't use this um, as well as I should have. I only went through like 10% of the question packs. And then I use the next step exams and then I use the LTS exams. And I didn't do all the next step exams, I didn't do all the LTS exams, but I did do every single question from these practice exams and I did do every single question from the section banks. I went through maybe like a third of UWorld, it's a lot of questions. Um, but those are kind of the things I was doing. I was going through maybe like 30, 40 questions a day um, and working maybe like <clears throat> four or five days a week, studying like six to eight hours a day. Um, so that, that was kind of my study plan uh, for that time. Uh, in April, I took these um, official practice exams because I wanted to know how I was doing. And uh, I scored a 517, a 516, and then a 515 um, consecutively over, um, over like one week time period. So I, I took all of these and I was like, I was kind of hoping that I would be higher at this point, but you know, I was around the 516 range uh, from my practice exam scores. So then I was like, okay, I don't really know what to do because I feel like I've um, I've learned all the content that I can for this MCAT. I feel pretty comfortable. I kept going through the milestone review sheets and I kept feeling like, okay, I, I think I know all this. Why am I not getting the score that I want to? And um, the reason is, and I think almost everybody who I've tutored has kind of gotten to this point where they get to a, a, th um, a plateau point where they know all the content really well. And if I quiz them or I try to figure out what is a weak point in their content, they don't really have a weak point. What they ha just haven't done is gotten enough reps on the questions that they feel like they can get higher than a 515 plateau or 516 plateau. Because at this point, it's really, really hard to kind of improve your score just by knowing everything, by knowing more content. At this point, you just kind of have to take a lot of practice questions. And that's kind of the only way that you're going to improve your score to like a, to a 520 plus. So I delayed my uh, exam to August. And then in July, um, after I did, I just kept doing this, this strategy. I just did more and more practice questions, more and more exams, tried to review, tried to do targeted learning. And um, then by uh, um, by July, around, like around the beginning of July, I got a 522 on the fourth AAMC exam. And I was about three or four weeks away from my official exam. So at this point, I kind of, um, I kind of like, <clears throat> um, 
studied a little bit less because I felt pretty pretty good about the score that I got. And I just reviewed this exam and uh, I was still studying like five, six, seven hours a day uh, with like one or two break days every week. So it wasn't like as strenuous as you'll see for some other people. Um, but it was definitely like I was a little privileged to have this much study time and not have to do a job or something along those lines. Uh, I took the exam in August and I scored a 524, which is 100 percentile. Um, so I was I was actually really surprised by this. I was kind of expecting like you know 516, 517, or some, like 515, something like that. Um, but you know it's really really good to hear about the score. And that was kind of the whole timeline that I had um, for getting this score. I'm making this video, again, not to brag, but I just kind of wanted to show you um, the whole timeline. I think when I show people this timeline, they're really surprised by how, how long I had to study because, you know, it was a really difficult path. And if somebody is telling you that they took like two weeks, two months to study, just I, I would not believe them. It, it's just a beast of an exam. It's an extremely difficult exam. And so um, just take as much time as you need to study, even if you need to take a year um, two years, something like that. that that's that's completely fine. Just uh, take as long as you need to get the score that you want to get. Um, I, I'll i make videos on all the resources that I use and exactly how I use them. But until then, I hope that this was a helpful uh, timeline for you to kind of figure out, you know, your own study schedule, how long you need to study, how many hours you need to study, and things like that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll be happy to get back to you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.